little bit, and I'm going to have to do a little bit of positive driving a little harder than I'd want to in this race, but we're going to go to the front no matter what it takes. I guess of all the racetracks we run, Richmond's probably the hardest on sheet metal of any racetrack we run. Real slick racetrack, real, real tight. So from that standpoint, you're going to build a lot of fun. This is a very tough racetrack on cars and on drivers, and uh, sometimes temper tend to flare after this race because it has been such a tough sheet metal race. Well, it's going to be awful tough for me. I'm here at a short track with a super speedway car, starting kind of back in the pack, so I got my work cut out for me. Here is Maureen Reagan. Gentlemen, start your engines. From Richmond, Virginia, it's NASCAR Grand National Stock Car Racing, and today it's a real fender bender. Coming up next on the Supercharger television series, The Superchargers. I'm Jan Gabriel, and today our very special guest, the 1981 and 1982 NASCAR Grand National Stock Car Champion, Darrell Waltrip. Uh, thank you, Jan, and uh, welcome to my shop here in sunny Charlotte. Charlotte, North Carolina, indeed, and we're in the shops, the race car shops of Darrell Waltrip, where they have a lot of short track cars. Short track, of course, being extremely important to the total NASCAR effort. Well, a lot of people that, you know, a lot of people minimize short tracks. They think that they're not as glamorous as at the Daytonas or the Talladegas. But what a lot of people don't realize is 30% of our races are run on short tracks. 30% of the racing in the country is run on short tracks. We make the same amount of points for winning a race on a short track as we do winning at Daytona or Charlotte or anywhere else. So the points are the same. The money has gotten to be extraordinary. Uh, two weeks ago at Richmond, Virginia, I won $47,000. That's more than most of the 500-mile races pay on the, on the circuit today. So uh, the money's there, the points is there, and the crowds are there, over 30,000 people at all the short track races. So it's, uh, it's a, really a thrill. These cars, what we're doing here is a lot of trial and error stuff that we're going to use, hopefully, down the road in Grand National Racing. That car won the sportsman race at Daytona in February. And this car over here is a short track car. This is a short track car, and it's a big part of our program. Now, short track racing, of course, is uh, basically the grassroots of stock car racing. It is. Uh, it's the Saturday night crowds are what makes the Sunday, the Sunday races so spectacular. It's all that interest that's created around the country on a Saturday night. That creates new fans. It creates new drivers. All these things come together and make a great Grand National Circuit. Well, it was about two weeks ago that we followed Darrell Waltrip to Richmond, Virginia for the Richmond 400. 400 grueling laps on a half-mile racetrack. So, this afternoon, Darrell's going to join us, and we're going to go back and take another look at Richmond, Virginia a couple of weeks ago. Richmond, Virginia is about an hour and a half's drive south of Washington, D.C. The Richmond Raceway is located on the Virginia State Fairgrounds, and the racetrack itself is just a shade over a half mile all the way around. Right now, let's take a look at the top ten qualifiers. On the pole, it was fast qualifier Darrell Waltrip of Franklin, Tennessee. Outside of him in the car number 98 was Joe Rutman of Upland, California. Inside row number two, it was Bill Elliott in the car number nine. Local favorite Ricky Rudd in the number 15 was on the outside. In row number three, car number 47, Ron Bouchard. On the outside, the car number 88, Rusty Wallace. Veteran racer Dave Marcus of Wausau, Wisconsin, was on the inside of row number four. Alongside of him was the number 44, Terry Labonte of Corpus Christi, Texas. Row number five was NASCAR's winningest driver, Richard Petty. Alongside of him, from Taylorsville, North Carolina, in the car number 33 was Harry Gann. Now, while you at home take a look at the rest of the field, Darrell Waltrip, tell us a little bit about this pace lap. What are you looking for? Uh, I'm sure that you're, you're building up some sort of anxieties for the green. <laughs> well, the adrenaline is flowing right now, and of course, that's, a, that's something you want to happen, but it's something you have to control. There are things you have to do on this pace lap. We smooth the car around, as you can see, to warm the tires up and knock any trash that's uh, built up on them off. Right now, I'm warming up the brakes. I've got my left foot on the brake. Uh, to get the brakes warmed up so I don't have a brake grabbing as I bail off into the first turn. Uh, revving the engine up, cleaning it out so it'll accelerate well when they drop the green, checking the transmission, uh, just generally going through all the checklist, checking the gauges, and uh, of course as it went around we were looking at the racetrack to see where the dirt was that had been uh, put on by cars crossing the track prior to the race. Any number of things that the, that the driver has to do, and he has to tell himself to do it, too. All right, thundering now, down into turn number one. You're on the green. Let's take it down the back straight away. Well, it's, uh, of course, the first lap here, just a little cautious. Uh, you saw the dirt back there on the racetrack where cars have been crossing the track. You want to be careful this first lap. Just get in a good, solid first lap, lead it, and uh, kind of get the car warmed up. The uh, oil hadn't come up to temperature yet, and the engine isn't really all that warm. You don't want to abuse the car too much on the start of the race. And you don't want to do anything that's going to cost you uh, 
losing a lead because leading a race on a short track is absolutely one of the most important things. Gerald, they run pretty close. They really do, and I think you're going to see uh, as the day wears on. There's a <laughs> Earnhardt in the fence already. That guardrail is uh, hard to stay off of. The track is very slick. It's very narrow, and it's one of the responsibilities the driver has. Take care of the car and don't get the fenders knocked in against the tire so you got to pit for a uh, for unnecessary reason. Another little disadvantage, uh, it's a little sandy area up near that uh, guardrail. Well, you know, as the cars go around the racetrack, they keep blowing the debris out next to the rail. And the rail has a tendency to suck you into it. It's not like a concrete wall where you kind of rub it and keep going. A guardrail will suck you into it. And those big wooden posts that hold it up are, are real hard on the race car. Now, again, this is a 400-lap event. You're watching the early stages. Here's where Joe Rutman now is passed by Ricky Rudd. Rudd moves up to the number two spot and, of course, sets his sights on uh, Darrell Waltrip. Well, you know, we knew Rudd would run good in the race. He beat us there in the spring race, and uh, we were concerned about where he was and what he was doing. This is a good Ford racetrack. Fords uh, can pull a little higher gear, which helps them when this track gets really slick. It gets they don't have the uh, low gear like the Chevrolet has, and they don't spin the wheel so bad up off the corner. Radio communications, of course, have always played an important role in uh, Grand National stock car racing, particularly, what, about the last 10 years or so? Oh, yeah, the, uh, the communication between the driver and the crew chief is uh, very critical. Uh, in situations where somebody's running better than you are, uh, they can call you on the radio and say you need to pick it up a little bit, or they can call you on the radio and tell you about a problem on the racetrack. I think that's the biggest thing that's made our sport a lot safer is the fact that the crew can say there's a caution in turn two, uh, the track's blocked, there's oil in turn three, go high. It really does make the driver's job a lot easier, particularly for staying out of trouble. So in the early going of this Richmond 400, it was Darrell Waltrip, the leader. Ricky Rutt was running second. Joe Rutman, third. Now here you see Bobby Allison taking on uh, Rusty Wallace on the high side of the racetrack uh, to take over the 12th position. He had started 21st. Uh, evidently, uh, Bobby had some problems in qualifying. Well, he didn't qualify very well, and, and you can see his car is not handling as well as I know Bobby would like for it to. That's been the uh, key to him, the success he's had at Richmond. He's won several races there, but his car seems to be pushing badly. When I say it's pushing badly, whoa, got a little problem here. Now, this is Dave Marcus out of Wausau, Wisconsin, the car number 75. He brought out the first yellow flag of the afternoon. As I was saying about Bobby's car, though, he goes in low on the racetrack and then slides up uh, near the outside of, of the racetrack. I know that's not what he's looking for. And, of course, the yellow brought out a rash of pit stops. Uh, time for assessment. Well, we come in the pit here, and, of course, we got to... The car's been running almost flawlessly, but you'll see Junior Johnson, he's getting his uh, adjustment wrench out there. He's going to run around here to the right side and uh, take a little wedge out of the car. The thing was pushing a little bit. This is a team sport. Everybody hustles, and this is where you win and lose races right here. Who can get in and out of the pits the quickest? Everybody's doing something to their car right now to try to make the car handle better under the track conditions as, as they exist. And, of course, you just saw Bobby Allison. Uh, here's Darrell pulling out. We asked Bobby Allison earlier to tell us about short track cars versus super speedway cars. To the uninitiated, you might look at a Grand National stock car and think they're all the same. But when you bring your race car to a short track, you have a specific short track machine. Bobby Allison, the Grand National Champion, can tell us the differences. Bobby, they're a little subtle, but there are some differences, aren't there? Well, there are. Uh, the biggest difference that you can see... Uh, on the outside of the car is the wheel openings are a little bit bigger on the short track cars. On the super speedway, we like to have the fenders as tight to the tires as possible for aerodynamic help. But uh, the real big differences are underneath where you can't see them. Uh, the weights are, are all situated different. The construction of the car is such that the car is a little bit heavier to the rear on the short track car. Uh, the brakes are different, the shock absorbers, the springs. Uh, the, the whole setup uh, underneath is, is quite different uh, from the short track car to the super speedway car. They're back on the green. Darrell Waltrip, you've just completed your first pit stop. Give us an assessment. Well, we, we made some changes in the car, and of course you have to do that periodically in the race to keep up with track conditions. The thing gets slick, uh, the, as the tires wear. As things change, you have to constantly work on the race car. You're looking at Dale Earnhardt now, and uh, Dale certainly uh, benefited from the pit stop. He moved up to the number two spot. Yeah, he's worked on the car, like I said, and of course you'll see other cars that weren't running that well start to move up through the field. Well, that's quite a pack of automobiles to try and get through. Well, it, it, this is really a tense part of the race. After a caution flag, the field is bunched up, people have gone in, made those adjustments we talked about, 
and you never know who's going to come out of that pack just a flying. Now here again, Bobby Allison, car number 22, trying to get around Joe Ruppin. He goes to the inside and gets it done. Yeah, Bobby worked on his car, and it is handling better, and Bobby will be a factor in this race, I'll, I'll bet you, before it's over. Now here's Tim Richmond, car number 27th, and uh, he had moved up in the field. Uh, he's, his car working pretty well here, too. Tim is uh, really something to watch on the racetrack. He's a hard driver, very aggressive. We got uh, two point leaders here, Terry Labonte, the point leader for the championship, and uh, Rusty Wallace, uh, the point leader for Rookie of the Year. So we've got a couple of champions with another champion right behind them. Well, that's right. It's Richard Petty. Richard ran in the top ten for most of the day. Richard Petty, of course, the winningest driver in NASCAR history. Here's Carol Yarbrough now on the outside, Darrell. He had some problems uh, during the uh, running of the event. Yeah, you know, Kale's won a lot of short track races, but he's not going to win this one today. Here's another shot from the rail cam. Big accident coming up. Look out. In trouble. Jimmy Hensley out of Ridgeway, Virginia, and Derek Cope out of Tacoma, Washington. Cope in the 07. A lot of damage to the car. Yeah, this is a, this is a problem you have on these short tracks. Uh, they do run out of room, and then, whoa, Richard Petty just run over something on the racetrack, cut down a tire. Uh, not a lot of racing room, and some, sometimes, you know, somebody gets forced into the guardrail, and that's what happened there. Petty ran over a bumper. You can see him coming in with a flat tire. There's Bouchard now getting set with uh, his pit stop, Ricky Rudd as well. And we'll be back with more with Darrell Waltrip and racing from...